morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Peter's Parish. We extend a warm welcome to visitors and new parishioners. Thank you for being here as we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent. Church will your be. Parish announcements. Please refrain from attending church if any of these apply to you. Any of the following symptoms. Fever, coughing, and wheezing, fatigue, loss of appetite, shortness of breath, excessive sputum, aching muscles, headaches, chills, confusion, runny nose, or shaking. Contact someone who's tested positive for COVID-19 in the past 14 days. Left the country or the province in the past 14 days, awaiting test results of your own COVID-19 test. A heartfelt thank you to all parishioners who have continued to support our church during these difficult times. Your contributions are much appreciated. Stations of the Cross, Fridays at 6.30 p.m. Weekly Stations of the Cross based on the text of the Way of the Cross with the Virgin Mary will take place in the parish on Friday evenings during Lent. Contact tracing information is required. March, time change reminder. The return to daylight savings time occurs next weekend, March 13, 14. Please remember to turn your clocks ahead one. This Mass is being offered for world peace and the parishioners of St. Peter's. Our presider is Father Nika, please stand.
reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents, to the third and fourth generations of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son, or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long on the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male, female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor.
Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cuts, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also called out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remember that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then they said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years. And you raise it up in three days. But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. When he was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus on his part would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to testify about human nature. For he himself knew what was within the human person. The Gospel of the Lord. Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends, like we said at the beginning of the Mass, today is already the third Sunday of Lent. A time the Church is calling on us for more introspection, to reflect, to get into ourselves to really, really question ourselves and our faithfulness to God and to God's Word. And in a special way, in this period, the Church will want us to reflect on the history of the economy of our salvation so that we know exactly who we are and what is expected of us as children of God. And in the Gospel today, from that of John chapter 2, we saw how Christ became really, really violent against the people in the temple. And he said to them, take these things out of here, stop making my father's house a marketplace. It wasn't an honorable thing or a beautiful thing in the eyes of the people to disrupt activities in the temple. However, it's important, my dear friends, for us to properly understand the why it happened. And of course, question ourselves and examine ourselves. Because um, a good number of times, some are content to say, Oh, I'm a Catholic. Oh, I'm a Catholic. Oh, I'm this and that. It is possible that you are 110% Catholic. That it is possible that you are very far away from God. The church is a structure. There are people who might be decorating it, like Richard, who works so hard, decorate everything, do things, but that is not the end of it. Or in the choir, maybe back at home, I remember one day I was celebrating Mass. And the organist and the choir people were busy talking, preparing about the next hymn, totally unconscious of whatever is it that we were doing. They were subsumed with their hymn, now they are going to render it. You know, after rendering one hymn, they start preparing the next, discussing, making noise in the church, even in front of the first sacrament. 
And then you see also the church world is going around, distracting every other person, as not listening to what was going on. And many other people, some are there watching others, they were the type of dressing, some are there watching oh, who was there and who was not. Totally forgetting the why we are there. The church is there to point God to us. The church is not there for us to be worshipping the church and things of the church. That is a mistake sometimes we make. Or worshipping our priests or worshipping our pastors and all that. The pastors are not gods. We priests are not gods. There are lots of differences between spirituality and religiosity. And that was what Christ was combating. There are many who are more interested in the, the religious observances. Oh, did you fast today? Oh, he did not, she did not wear in the church. He did not wear in the church. Oh, he did not do this. And our hearts are very far away from God. We have to look in words. In the gospel today, Christ sent away these people who were in the temple selling sheep, cattle, doves, and the money changers. What was happening then was that, you know, the Jewish people, there were many of them in diaspora, many living in many other parts of the world. The during great festivities, they all took down to the temple in Jerusalem to worship. There are some Jewish people who speak Aramaic. There are some who speak Hebrew. There are some who speak Greek. Whichever area they were living, they use the currencies of those people. So, when they now come down to the temple, they are expected to do exchange. Now, get the, the currency that was being used. They are shekels. They have to get it in order to offer sacrifices with those shekels. So now, when these people come, they were so much cheated, the rates were so exorbitant, robbing them of their, their money, reducing the worth of whatever it is that they came with, so that those people who were working there, mostly from the Levitical families and those that were appointed by the high priests, they made money off these people coming to uh, to exchange in order to have the right currency to do their sacrifice. Then, if you want to offer a cattle or a sheep or a dove, they insist that you have to come there to the temple to buy the one that they are selling, the one they consider clean. That if you bring your own, your own might be unclean. A gentile may have touched it or you may have passed a gentile. And that sacrificial offering you want to offer God may have been tainted. So, they want you to leave your own, come there and buy from them. So, a ram you may buy for, say, $30. You may come to the temple and they will be selling it $100. Because you don't have any other option. You have to buy from them in order to offer that sacrifice. That was why Christ was irate and kick them all out. Because they were profiteering from the innocence of many of these people. They are concerned with those religious ceremonies. Now, making money off it. Just like some people are questioning, why is it that your disciples are eating without washing hands, without doing the normal ablution that they do, that they still do before they come inside the temple? Those things, my dear friends, in as much as the meaning and the onset was very noble, but it now became misused. The people now totally misunderstood what it was all about. And I think I told this story sometime in a Jewish in a Hindu monastery, where they had a hat, and uh, when they come to pray, they do lots of meditation. They seem to meditate, 
and when they are meditating, the car that they normally play around with will see them, you know, sitting like statues and it will be scratching them. They will try to get their attention. At a point, the, the chief monk asked them to, once they come in to pray, to tie the cat to a pole inside the temple. And they were doing that. After a while, many of those monks died. Many new people were coming in. Then none of them who were there when that thing be started was alive. And then the cat died. It was time for prayers. They didn't see the cat again. They suspended their prayers. Sent somebody to the market to buy a cat. Then they now got a cat, tied it to the pole, and they started praying. They were not there when that ceremony, when that thing started. But they thought it was part of the rituals that you have you need to tie a cat to this pool in order for you to start praying and for your prayers to be heard. They totally misunderstood what it was all about. Unfortunately, my dear friends, that is the trap that many of us still fall in today. We may be here trying to, uh, I fasted very well before Holy Communion. I mean, good Catholic. Whereas there are people, through your meanness, they are still suffering. You are holding people down. There are people, when they see you, their heart skips a bit. There are people who, when you move out of the house, they hear a sigh of relief. When you come again, war has started. And you think that you are at peace with your God when you are a terrorist to many people, your colleagues, your spouse, your friends. Your subordinates. These are the things, my dear friend, that Christ will want us to look intently at. And not many of these ephemeral things, not many of these things that are passing, not many of these outward ceremonies. That was the reason why he was talking about being circumcised at heart, not at the, at the flesh. We have to get it to ourselves, my dear friend. It's just like in our first reading today, we saw how the devil was received by Moses, the Ten Commandments. It is these same Ten Commandments that the Jewish rabbis multiplied, tried to explain it, and they turned over in 600 commandments. Do not do this. Do not do that. At their lives, we are wrapped around with do not do this, do not do this, do not do this. And for many, it drives them out. That was why it was hard for them to understand when Christ was trying to, to put that cross. Listen, our God is a loving Father. God is a Father. They complicated things so much that they now see God as just that being out there with his mantle waiting for you to make a mistake and for him to strike. But our God is not like that. That was why the people were finding it difficult. They, they don't mention the name of God, Yahweh. They said that God is so holy that they are unworthy. That was why they call him other names. Elohim, El Olam, El Shaddai. They mentioned everything except his name. The name is said Yahweh. That is my name. But Christ came to teach us that God is a father. He said, if you wicked as you are know how to give good things to your children, how much more my father in heaven? That was why in Luke 15 he did, told them the parable of the prodigal son. And showed them up before he was he prepared, he gave his prepared speech. The father had already forgiven him. He tried to change the notion they had already due to their religiosity as different from spirituality. He tried to show them our God, the fact who he truly is. That, my dear friends, is what we have to content ourselves with and not the religiosity. Because a good number of times, you know, when we were in the seminary, you know, when in our ceremonies, in our liturgy, at the mass, 
the singing, the reading, the serving at mass, the homily. We will be watching the organist, noting where he made mistakes, not enjoying the music. We will be waiting for the cantor so sing, noting where they made mistakes. And then the other server, those who with the acolytes, because it's uh, you've been in the seminary for many, many years before you reach the stage of seven at mass. We will be watching every of their steps. Those who turn right instead of turning left. Those who bowed down well and or who didn't do well. Those who rose up the time they were supposed to and some who were absent-minded. We will be noting all that. And then when the priests come up to preach, because we were studying philosophy and theology, our ears are open to pick holes in the argument, the systematic argument, whether what he was saying was making, not listening to God's word. When we're in theology, we will try to see what this thing he is saying. If you view it through the eye of missiology, does it make sense? If you view it through uh, moral theology, does it make sense? In dogmatic theology, does it make sense? No, stuff like that. What we are called to, my dear friends, is to open up our hearts for the faith that we have in God. To allow that faith to work in us and with us. And not necessarily be content with many of these festivities, many of these rituals. The rituals are beautiful if you understand the meaning and if you tune into it, not if you are stuck with jobs with the rituals. They are supposed to be conduit pipes, delivering water, and not necessary because the power that delivers water to the house does not tend the water. That is what the church will want us to reflect, my dear friends. These Ten Commandments is basically about love. Love of God and love of neighbor. That was the summary Christ gave to these Ten Commandments. Irrespective of the fact that the Jewish people interpreted it to over 600 different commandments. But the summary of all of it is love. Love of God and love of them. Let us ask ourselves, my dear friends, to what extent, if we are examined, if God were to come here to be, if you were to ask us to be, how far we have come? in loving him and loving our neighbor. What will our responses be? Irrespective of whatever is it that we say with our mouth, let us look into our lives. Let us look inwards. It is possible as human beings that we are struggling with many of this, but we have to ask God for help. That is why we are here, to draw strength from him, to ask him to help us, to ask him to journey with us. These things are not just easy to come by. It demands positive effort. We have to keep making effort. What we are asking God is to bless our effort, to strengthen us. Not necessarily that we have achieved that perfection. We are not. We are supposed to be making steady progress every day. Today is already the 10th Sunday of Lent. What virtues have you imbibed in these three weeks? And what vices have you made up your mind to cut out from your lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we stand to profess our friends. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And he seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Prayer of the faithful, my dear brothers and sisters.
as Jesus cleanses and refreshes us with the waters of life, let us voice our prayers for our ongoing conversion this Lent, for those preparing for baptism, and for all our needs this day. For the church, that we may grow in our awareness of our dignity as templates of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord be our prayers. For world peace and for the grace of renewal, that God's covenant with us will move our hearts to a deeper relationship with God and greater service to our neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord be our prayers. For all who teach and preach, that they may faithfully proclaim Christ crucified and lead others into the mystery of God's love. Lord. Lord, Lord. For a deeper appreciation of the commandments, that we may allow the wisdom and vision of the commandments given to Moses to form our conscience and guide our decisions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. For a spirit of integrity, that we recognize ourselves as servants of God, honoring God's name by our, by our words and deeds, and never attempting to use God for our benefit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. For each of us, and for a cleansing of the temple of our hearts, that God will free us from our all that enslaves us and help us to offer our self-sacrificing service to God and others. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For all who are ill, and for a successful distribution of the COVID vaccine, that God will relieve their pain, restore their health, and protect the human family from the further spread of the COVID virus, and for all our deceased relatives and friends. Pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray, Almighty God, you are the giver and the preserver of all good things. Help us to keep and honor your commandments. Give us grace and strength to follow you more closely. Grant all our humble petitions which we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth, and work of human hands to become for us the bread of life. the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands to become our spiritual dream. Yes. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. The Lord accept the sacrifice and thanks. We praise the praise and glory of his name. Amen. 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 Please, O oh Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really right in John's that duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, you are faithful and await the sacred Paschal feast with the joy of minds made pure. So that, more eagerly intent on prayer and on the words of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to 
the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy them for this gift to pray. By sending now your spirit upon them that we do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and then that willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave it thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave it thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring out the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Marcel our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially in New Haven, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph and Spouse, with the Blessed Apostle and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father,
Lord and I am of God, who will give the saints of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I won't believe your name on that matter. So you say the words of my
us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven, and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in all sin mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The red to Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness, grant your servants this grace that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your lives. Prayer to St. Michael. Since I am the archangel, the Lord's spouse, we are protection against wickedness as the end of the devil. May God rebuke you in all the prayer, and do thou always on the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits 